interested, so he says. People continue to pour love into him and to keep showing God's love to him. And afterwards, he uh, he went on to accept Christ into his life, and he is walking in his faith now today. Um, and he continues to try to um, use that love that was poured into him and pour it out to other people. I've seen him pour it into kids, into youth um, in our neighborhood, and youth from all across the Charlotte. And he's still um, going out to show that unconditional love with people around him. And so just in looking at that idea that we're supposed to love people no matter what, love your neighbor as you do yourself, that golden rule, if we are loving them unconditionally, then that love will begin to show and people will begin to see the light of Christ inside of us. And that light of Christ is very attractive to everyone. It draws people near. It's like um, it's like a, a just a burning fire. Like you just don't know what to do. You go to it no matter what. So when you're out, when you're out working with youth who are fatherless, this love is going to be very attractive to them. You love them no matter where they're at. You meet them where they're at, just as Christ meets us where we are. That is the love that um, will change a life, will go about and make change in someone's heart. So um, that's really, um, I'm really, this is really, that's about it. Um, I'm used to a more conversational thing, so this is kind of weird. Uh, Damon, if you want to hop back on. All right. Can you see me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Uh, that's great. And you know, sharing stories is, is really kind of how I uh, share my experience you know, with God and you know, how I got to work you know, where I'm at and still continuing to, to learn and grow and trust in God and you know, through all the trials and you know, tribulations as, uh, that we go through as, as a, a father today, you know, and growing up fatherless as well, like Duran and um, when having two kids of my own, right? I have a 19 year old and a 10 year old, two boys. So <clears throat> I, I think about how I felt, um, like Deron was saying, growing up by myself. So, you know, well, we'll, we'll go ahead and you know, we have some, we have a little bit of extra time. It's only 1114. And we do have one question in here right now, which I think is a great question. And, uh, Deron, uh, the question is, you know, uh, where'd you go to high school? Um, I went to high school at Myers Park High School uh, in Charlotte. Okay. And how did you mentor help? How did your mentor help you get through those years? So um, in getting through the years, uh, there was times where my mentor was there for me in moments where I didn't even know I needed people to be there. Um, there were times where there was a time where um, I came home from school and just felt kind of down. And uh, my mom noticed it and called my mentor over and he ended up sitting on the couch with me crying. I, well, I was crying, he wasn't crying, but um, sitting on the couch and I and cried in his arms, uh, just an upset youth missing love from my father. And so, uh, the, those were, there were times like that where uh, my mentor was there just to love me, even though I didn't know I needed that love at the time. Um, how did your mentor help you through college years? You know, the first, so you've been in college, what, uh, which is your second, second year, Duran? Uh, third year. Third year. So how, how has uh, that mentor or any other mentors that have entered into your life, you know, through just through, through God, through calling that have helped you through college. Cause college is hard. Like I've, I've, I went to college and, you know, especially thinking about the financial aspect of it, you know, applying for student loans and just the day to day, right. Still kind of feeling like you're by yourself. Uh, so how, how's, how'd that help? How'd your mentor? Uh, my mentor is, um, he's here for me, uh, 
just in emotional and financial support if I need it. Um, he's available to, um, during my breaks, I can come back to Charlotte and just, um, we can go get lunch and chat and be able to talk about what's going to go on, what's, what challenges we're facing. And uh, he's there for whenever um, I have time to be able to talk and be able to debrief myself and be able to um, recenter myself around God with him. Okay, great. So we got a question from Ben. Uh, ben wants to know, you know, what attributes of a mentor you know, made you successful in your life? Um, the attributes of a mentor that made me successful was someone who's willing to challenge me. Um, in life, we have a lot of people who will support you and be there for you, but that support is not going to make you better in the end. It will help you out um, just where you're at, and that love is good for you. But a mentor who is willing to challenge you in your faith, challenge you to be better in your faith, um, and grow is someone who's going to be able to help you be successful. Great. And this is a great question from Ben as well. He's got a two part question. And, and I know this uh, resonates with me well, and uh, probably you Duran as well, dealing with the youth today. You know, how does a mentor, you're a mentor, right? So think mm -hmm. of you, you being a mentor, as well as the mentor that you've had in your life, whether it's one person or a couple, how does a kid, you know, how does a mentor pursue a kid that doesn't want to be pursued? But you, but you know that they're pouring you, they're crying out for help, but they just don't want to be pursued. How do, how do you, have you handled that or have you had that encounter before? Or was that you, you know, at all growing up? Um, so those kids, uh, I kind of believe, um, well, from my experience, those kids are the kids who want the love the most. So when they push, when they're pushing away, um, that's just them pushing away someone who they are afraid is going to leave them in the end. So in our neighborhood, most of our kids, we, they're fatherless and they have men come in and out of their lives, just as I did. So when you have a man coming in and out of your life and mentors coming in and out of your life, um, you just feel that the next one is just going to be there temporarily and they're going to leave. And so you then begin to build this mentality that if I push them away, then it won't hurt as bad when they leave. So when you're a mentor and the kid is pushing you away, it's probably just because they think you're going to leave in the end. So being that, um, having that unconditional love, being present with them throughout their life will be the best way to pursue them is showing that you're present with that kid and you're going to be there with them. Yeah, and I agree, uh, you know, with, you know, what you're saying is, you know, being a mentor is, is really something that people need to take serious. You know, he, it's not easy being a mentor because it's, they've already had people enter and exit their lives, you know, multiple times, you know, I know my father and mother as well, you know, grown up motherless people, um, you know, isn't talked about enough either. And it hurts more when they come in and then they leave and they don't show up or they're not, you know, doing what they say they, you know, they'll do, you know, picking you up or being there at a, at a game or, you know, whatever activity it is, it doesn't have to be just sports, but not having a, a figure showing up to support you when all the other kids' parents are showing up. And I know I experienced that as well. So those of you thinking about being a mentor, you know, that's, it's a long-term commitment, right? You need to be there for them and uh, support them and, don't, don't leave them again, you know, don't leave them, right? Uh, so think about that commitment before you do it. Um, um, so th thanks for those questions. And, you know, a couple other questions. Uh, we still got a few minutes for anybody that wants to post some questions uh, for Duran. But Duran, you know, how, you know, knowing, um, you know, that there are a lot of, you know, young men out there just thirsting for attention, just, just any type of mentorship, father figure, just a friend, you know, someone to listen to them, to be able to talk about, you know, boy things or young men things. And sometimes it's not always easy to talk to, you know, the mother about it, but how do you show those, uh, you know, more troubled kids that you know that, 
I don't know, you got five or six of them and you want to, you know, mentor the ones that you think that want the mentorship the most and the ones that are resistant or always getting in trouble. You know, how do you show that unconditional love to everyone? You know, as God does, how do you not pick and choose who you really want to help? If that is ever a challenge for you. Um, yeah, that is a challenge. It's uh, tough with, especially in our ministry, we know we have around 60 plus kids um, who are coming and going uh, and they all want, and you want to love them all equally. So um, I would just say that's something, since that's something we deal with, I would say that the best way to deal with it is to just um, express that love to them um, if they're willing to open it and pursue it more then you can go more in depth with it. But um, God just calls us to love um, where we can. So uh, for the kids that you don't have that deeper relationship and showing uh, super unconditional love in depth with them, uh, it could just be checking with them uh, on every occasion, weekly, um, every other week uh, where you can. And then uh, for the kids that you are, closer with, you can go more in depth, um, and more in depth, meeting with them maybe two, three times a week, and uh, just showing that you love each and every one of the kids. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's check our time here. So we still have, uh, we still have eight minutes left. Um, got another question here. And so one of the questions is, they want to know, Duran, if you can share an experience where you really had a good time with the person you were mentoring. You know, maybe a time when you guys learned a spiritual lesson together or just had a good laugh. Um, many to choose from. Uh, so there's many times where uh, the most, the best relational um, experiences I've had come when you're not even really trying to have an emotional or uh, a great emotional experience. So um, there's been times where we're just in the house uh, eating dinner and playing board games and some of the best relational um, moments just come from the laughs that we had uh, playing those board games, being competitive with one another and um, just really like being just almost like brothers, just playing games and having fun. And that um, the unconditional love kind of goes into that when you're just loving them where they are in a fun game. Gotcha. Um. So how many hours do you, like how much time would you say you devote to this? You know, each week, a day, a month? I mean, how, how plugged in are you? And how, how do you find the time with school and, you know, things like that? Um, so currently, uh, currently as a student, um, most of my time is during the summers and during breaks. So when I'm back from school during breaks, uh, I'm talking to kids. Um, spending time with kids, going to play ball, soccer, whatever. And um, during the summer, we have a, a weekly um, summer camp where the kids are here Monday through Friday. And I get to spend, kids, spend time with the kids, um, go in a small group, and just have fun with them. Have you been able to navigate uh, with the pandemic, right, with the stay-at-home orders? Have you been utilizing Zoom and, you know, free uh, technology that's out there. I think that's probably, uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody, uh, the younger generation knows how to use all this stuff. But uh, I know it's been utilized a lot within businesses and connecting with family, but knowing and sharing with the men, you know, there are uh, ways to uh, continue to stay engaged and still mentor, even though it's not fair. Uh, face to face, you know, so to speak. Uh, yeah, Zoom is definitely a, a very helpful device for um, reaching kids that are far away. Um, the kids that I have relationships with, uh, they have my phone number and I have their phone number. 
So uh, they can call me anytime um, during this time where the, the we're in phase two of uh, COVID, where you can actually be out and about. Um, we'll meet up and uh, do activities that kind of keep our distance, but we're still having fun together and uh, just um, just spending time where we can without um, risk without risking anybody's uh, health. Okay, great. Um, let me see. We got uh, maybe we got one more. We got a lot of people thanking you for your time today. So that is uh, great. <clears throat> uh, probably got time for one more question for you, Duran. And uh, let's see our time here. Eleven twenty-seven. Uh, here's what do you, what do you do after establishing that a condition that conditional love? You know what's your what's your protocol or procedure? Or what do you just what do you do after establishing that unconditional love? Um, once you establish that love, and um, once you or you and that that kid uh, have one, uh, um, become more vulnerable with each other, and you're able to open up. Um, that's when you can start uh, cycling and building that um, building in their faith, introducing more of the the scripture and the word to them, the gospels and uh, all all the things that God calls us to do. And that's just really when you start to disciple the um, kid and uh, help them to find God's glory. Okay, great. Uh, did get one more question for you. We'll end with this one and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, this is uh, from anonymous attendee, which is okay. Uh, I want to know an example, Duran, of a time when you learned a valuable lesson from a mentee, mentor, or it says from a mentee, sorry. Um, from a mentee, uh, there's, it's, it's amazing how um, kids, especially younger kids, their words are innocent, but they also hold a lot of meaning in them. So um, there's been times where uh, a young kid I've mentored has just said something, uh, such as a simple statement, such as like, um, like about love and why, why, why would we not love someone that we don't know, who we don't have anything to hold against them? And uh, comments like those where you actually think about what the kid is saying and you get to understand the depth of something that they might not even understand that they said, but it teaches you in that moment. Great. Well, it's 1129. Um, Ron, thank you so much for your inspiration, your words, your dedication, giving back, not forgetting where you came from, and just <clears throat> trusting in God. Um, and that's the big thing is truly turning, you know, all things are possible through him and trusting him. So uh, thank you for doing that. I've put on, um, I just put in a link for, for everybody that's on this call here to uh, you know, continue, you know, challenge yourself, engage, partner in some ministries you know, that can impact the fatherness. Even though you've grown up fatherlessness, you know you experienced it and you know, use that to help mentor you know, those that are lost or just feel that they don't have a purpose and you know, God can help you do that and help minister through you. So I put a link on there. You can sign up for more information. Uh, as far as the impact your city. So I put that link in the, in the post. So hopefully y'all can see that, but a lot of this information will be, uh, it's recorded and you can go to uh, man up Charlotte and get all the pre-recorded for all the sessions, um, today. So, uh, thank you again, Duran and uh, God bless you and everyone on the call and, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. All right.